morning. Welcome to worship with Denville Community Church, the Church of the Open Door. I am Maya Bright Eye, she, her, hers, and I thank you for being a part of this faith community. You are invited to a moment of quiet rest, a time of slowing the pace of your body and mind so that the spirit can settle to reflect and remember with gratitude. Let us worship God together and be inspired to make a positive impact on the world as followers of Jesus Christ. Let us join together in a prayer. Holy Lord, we confess that we have often allowed a host of worries and frustrations to distract us from your goodness. Open our hearts to your redeeming and transforming grace. Restore our hope, courage, and joy for the times ahead as we follow your call to care deeply about the well-being of others. Please forgive all those times when we have been less than faithful disciples. Let us take a moment for silent prayer of confession. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with a humble awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow and courage to continue this journey. Friends believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. and girls, welcome back. Let's start out by collecting our offering. So go ahead and find your box or your bag and put your offering in there. Great, let's say a prayer. Loving God, we thank you so much for these many gifts. May we use them to do good throughout the world in your name, amen. Now, today's scripture verse is about the kingdom of God. Do you know what the kingdom of God is? Well, it can be explained in a lot of different ways, but 
for today's lesson, we're talking about the kingdom of God as it is right here on earth. That's right. You can have the kingdom of God right here surrounding you every day. Have you ever gone on a hike or to the beach or seen how beautiful and wonderful and majestic God's creation is? That's the kingdom of God. Or when we're kind to people and good and treat people the way that we would like to be treated, just like Jesus taught us, that is our way of bringing the kingdom of God right down here to earth. So I'm hoping that we can keep seeking the kingdom of God here on earth. And maybe this week you'll find it in some special way. Maybe it'll be when somebody lets you and mom cut in line at the grocery store. Or maybe it'll be when your brother shares with you. There's lots of different ways that you can see the kingdom of God here on earth and ways that you can make the kingdom, kingdom of God here on earth. And I believe you can. Let's say a prayer. Loving God, we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to create and make and be in your kingdom here on earth. Help us to see it and be it. In your name we pray, amen. And now let's pass the peace of Christ. Make eye contact with me or with someone you know, someone in the room or someone you know, why not? And let's share the love of God. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Members of Dendle Community Church, friends and families following at home, the peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Hear this story from chapter 13, verses 44 through 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Good morning, church. Good evening, good afternoon. Whenever you are worshiping with us, we are simply glad that you have become or are a part of this faith community. Now I imagine if Jesus lived today and had social media, I bet he could make the parables that Adam just read for us into tweets on Twitter. They are short and concise and yet leave us thinking. And so before we delve into their meanings, will you please pray with me? Lord God, will you bless the words that I speak and the words that are heard, that they might be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The parables today about the kingdom of heaven describe two different people who find treasure. A man out in a field finds a treasure he never expected to find and with joy goes off to sell all that he has to come back and buy the field so that he can have the treasure. The second person is a merchant 
who is looking for a pearl. And when he finds it, he also goes off to sell all that he has in order to buy the pearl, the treasure. Now, what do these parables tell us about the kingdom of heaven? As Jesus was teaching them, telling these stories to the disciples, I imagine that they are probably intended to remind us that as we find the treasure of heaven, we will act in ways that demonstrate their value, the value of Christian faith, and the vision that God has for humanity while we live here on earth and into eternity is more valuable than anything else that we have. It is a matter of priorities. And so I do notice a difference, however. The person in the field reacted with joy and the merchant did not. So why would there be such a difference? I imagine it's like the seeds that I preached about last week that some people who find faith unexpectedly react with great joy and prioritize faith in their lives. The other person reminds me of people who have perhaps grown up in church, witnessed and observed the faith of their parents and grandparents, and so they know what they are looking for. When they find it, even though joy may not be the reaction they have innately, they go to prioritize faith in their lives over all other things. One situation is not better than another. They're simply different. And so what does that look like for us today? Now there are ordination candidates in this church who are all in as they discern how to follow Jesus into ordained ministry. But that's not the only way that we can be all in as we follow Jesus. Now, following Jesus is not like social media, where you can easily, with a click of a button, become a follower of any person in the world, or you can have followers, even millions of followers that you have never met and never will meet, watching them from a distance, or having them watch you from a distance to give hearts or likes, some form of approval. Following Jesus is very different because we get engaged. We are all in with our faith, with our time and our treasures and our talents. Both of these people in scripture went. They spent their time going to sell all that they have so they could come back to gain the treasures. We too, as Christians, invest our time and our treasures as acts of faith. Now, historically, churches have recognized that the way people grow in faith is not just through worship, but also small groups where you can build relationships as you learn about faith, about God, about scripture. Also through hands-on missions, where you are investing your time and your tears and your grit and your strength in order to serve those who are suffering. Also through our generosity, through giving our gifts, which we can do through a click of a button. Thanks to Lori Rapp, our treasure, finding ways for us to give generously through the online webpage or our app. Now church, we are looking ahead as church leaders to discern how to strategize our ministry so that more of us can grow deeper in faith in 2021. We know these are uncertain times during the pandemic, but what would help us is if you could pay attention to an email or a letter that will be coming to you in the next week. It will ask you, as you think and pray about 2021, how would you like to grow in faith? Is it through a small group, a hands-on mission project? How much generosity do you think you might be able to give? 
And also, are you willing to worship regularly? The last thing is, will you please pray? Pray for the congregation and please pray for me. What are you willing to commit to in order to grow in faith and support the spiritual growth of the other people in this congregation? My husband and I want to go all in with our family, investing in the ministries of the church and participating in them through small groups and hands-on mission projects. For our kids, we'll find ways for them to do it that are age appropriate. We will worship as often as we can. And my husband and I, as far as generosity of finances goes, are like the merchant, where we know what we are looking for because we have observed our parents and grandparents tithing to the church, giving 10% of their income to the regular offering as a step of generosity that can be expanded upon for special moments and times. Now, I understand that might sound crazy to you if you have never tithed. You might not have that wiggle room. And I understand it's also difficult to plan ahead. When such times are uncertain, we don't know who will lose jobs. But this is a compassionate church. And if you cannot meet your pledge for some reason, we understand. The founder of Methodism, John Wesley, said, give all you can. We understand that you can't give what you don't have. We understand, but we appreciate you giving us a heads up about what you intend to do, which will help us in our strategic planning for the ministries of this church as the church leaders. Please pay attention for that email and that letter. We always, every year, invite you to look ahead and prayerfully discern how is God calling you to grow in faith and support the spiritual growth of others through the ministries of this church. On November 22nd, we will be praying for our intentions and praying for each other. We can begin today though. Let's pray as YK plays that we might be able to discern how God is calling us to follow Jesus in 2021.
Friends, would you please now join me in the pastoral prayer? Almighty God, we praise you for working to make your kingdom both a future hope and a present reality for your people. Please forgive us when we become enamored by wealth, success, approval, or possessions. Help us to know that the idols of this world pale in comparison to your treasures. And it should help us to ask all that we have and all that we are toward the kingdom building that you are doing. Guide and empower us so that we may join you in your work of meeting the needs of the world around us. Lord God, we thank you so much that you provide unique roles for all your children in your kingdom and for the call that you put in the hearts to be in vocational ministry for you. Thank you for ministerial growth and development opportunities that you provide through churches like Denville Community Church, as well as Drew and Princeton Theological Schools, and through guidance from devoted leaders. Please bless them, and please continue to guide and strengthen Janice, YK, Emma, and I, along with all our brothers and sisters who are going through the ordination process. Loving God, we continue to pray for your peace to end the hostilities resulting from the election. And we pray for eyes to see each other as you see us. Help our leaders to be guided by love and value for all creation. Heal those who are hurting in body, mind, or spirit. And please comfort the many mourning the death of loved ones. Eternal God, you have shared with us these lives. Before they were ours, they were yours. For all they have given us to make us what we are, for that of them which lives and grows in each of us, and for their lives that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer them back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another. Make us faithful to serve one another. And give us to know that peace and joy, which is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My name is Adam Woods, and I've been a church member for two and a half years. I invest in our church ministries because Denville Community Church's efficacy as our spiritual home, community hub, and platform for domestic and international missionary work is largely dependent on our generosity. While much of our work and success comes from our efforts, it also requires funding. Funding for our programs and aid to those less fortunate comes from us. Please remember this as you continue to support Denville Community Church and its mission 
whether online, using the Give Plus app, or by check. I leave you with this passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Amen. This year, because of COVID restrictions, our annual church conference was a charge conference, which means that the church council members represented the whole congregation as they met via Zoom with our district superintendent, Rev. Dr. Eunice Vega Perez, who preached for us a few Sundays ago. I want to thank all of our church council members for their leadership during this pandemic. In spite of the physical distance we have, they have been able to help our treasurer obtain the PPP loan, which will hopefully be forgiven. They have also helped the trustees pave the church parking lot. They have supported the covenant that volunteer church members made with how about how we would be in ministry with the LGBTQ plus community. They have also supported Frank Cacaval's idea that our church partner with Habitat for Humanity as a new hands-on mission. So thank you to the church council members for all of the wisdom and the discerning and the decisions that you have made this year as a team. I especially want to thank Jean File for serving as the chair of church council for the past four years. He has led us through a pastoral transition and now the pandemic. Thank you warmly, Jean, for your leadership. At the Charge Conference, we exchanged positions between him and Lee Haas until the end of the year. And so I also want to thank Lee Haas, our lay leader, for being willing to step up as the chair for the next couple of months. Other positions will change in January But there is one other person who is beginning his term this fall. Sean Plum has been willing to step up into the preschool board to serve. And we thank you, Sean, for your willing to uh, participate with your time and your energy. At this time, I'd like to give Don Catanzaro the opportunity to give us a behind the scenes look at what it has been like to open our preschool in order to serve the families of our community during this pandemic. Thank you, Don, and thank you, Teresa. Go ahead. Good morning. 2005, it doesn't seem very long ago, but it was 15 years ago. Yes, 15 years ago. If in 2005 you had a newborn, that baby is now in high school. If you learned to drive a car in 2005, you are now 32 years old and may have children of your own. And if you were attending Denver Community Church Nursery School in 2005, you are now 17, 18, or 19 years old and had Mrs. Teresa Ackerman as the preschool director. Teresa has been faithfully serving Denver Community Church Preschool for 15 years Throughout those years, she has seen many, many children grow and go on to continue their education. Her dedication and hard work has made the preschool a long-loved institution for so many families. But a school doesn't run itself. It takes careful leadership to make it work, and Teresa has done this with expertise for 15 years. We have seen new families attend and join our church because of their preschool experience and Teresa's caring presence. Most recently, with the onset of the pandemic, Teresa put in countless hours to make the students 
and their families feel loved and special. She has many new state standards to follow this year and has meticulously prepared to safely open and make it once again a great place for the teachers, students, and their families. On behalf of the preschool board, the church, and all the parents and students, I would like to congratulate Teresa on a job well done and thank her for her tireless efforts in making Denville Community Church Preschool a wonderful place to be. Congratulations. As our worship service comes to a close, I want to thank Maya and Adam, as well as Dawn and everyone else who helped lead us in worship today. As we go to Coffee Fellowship and off to our everyday activities, I'd like to bless you with a benediction that was inspired by Anselm of Canterbury, a man who served as Archbishop a thousand years ago. May you seek God in your desire and desire God in your seeking. May you find God by loving God and love God when you find God. Amen. Go in peace. I hope you can stay healthy and well. God bless. We'll worship next week. Bye.